The best way to say it is that November was a solid month in the real estate market. It was a great month for most, unless, of course, if you're one of those people praying for a housing crash to happen. If, well, that's you, then this month and this data, it's going to kind of suck. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for single family homes, condos, as well as multi family properties, then you're in the right place. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. Now, if you're planning on buying or selling a home now or anytime in the near future, it would be a true pleasure to speak with you. Let's start with the single family market. In November, of 2023, we saw 2,953 single-family houses sell for an average sales price of $735,000. I mean, that was no record-setting month, but it was right in line with what we saw in October. The 2,953 single-family houses that sold was 11.9% off of last year's sales numbers from 3,352 homes closed. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not celebrating these numbers, but I am recognizing that they could be a lot worse the 11% year-over-year decrease is a heck of a lot better than September when we saw a 26% year-over-year decrease in sales levels. Like I said, last month, at this point, we just need to embrace the suck when it comes to the amount of sales in the marketplace. This isn't going to get much better in any time in the near future. Sales and prices are two factors that don't work in tandem. This monthly data continues to prove that. There we go. The year-over-year -year appreciation rate has come back to earth. It's safe to say that last month's 13.75% year-over-year appreciation rate, well, that was an outlier. But take out October for a second. Do you notice a trend for that graph? It's slowly gaining since June. With November's 7% year-over-year increase, this now means that single-family home prices have gone up by 4.8% in the 11 months of 2023. That is an increase from last month when the year-over-year increase was 4.6%. Now, prices going up in 2023, it's a certainty. You market crashers, you got it wrong. Who's willing to bet that home prices are going down next year? I'd love for you to make a comment below and just tell me how much you think they're going to go down and why they're going to go down. But let's continue to dig into this data. Look at the yearly sales comparison. Again, don't get me wrong. It's not pretty, but it's getting the job done. The 2,953 sold homes puts our sales levels right around the levels of 2011 when 2,920 houses sold. The 2023 real estate story is not about the amazing home sales levels. It's about the resiliency of the marketplace. We have seen sales levels in line between 2011 and 2012. And for pretty much what we've seen for all of 2023, again, sales-wise, this wasn't a great year, but this market took some of the biggest blows someone could throw at it. And while it didn't get out looking squeaky clean, it also didn't come out covered in, well, you know what. As far as 2024 goes on the sales side, who knows? Interest rate predictions are all over the place. Lower interest rates will equate to more home sales. Higher levels will mean less sales. But the, for 2024, it's doubtful that rates will go higher than the peaks that we saw this year. And I don't see any scenario where prices going down. And that is now 29 consecutive months. 29 consecutive months of year-over-year -year sales declines. This trend will continue into next year. But if interest rates do end up going down even slightly, then at some point I see this impressive run coming to an end. And as we have talked about so many times, sales levels and pricing gains or losses don't necessarily correlate. Here is the corresponding graph that shows this to be true. Less sales and higher prices. It's pretty much the 2023 narrative. This means we've now seen 29 consecutive months of sales declines and 42 consecutive months of price increases. 42. In other words, three and a half years. And this is kind of a joke considering it was a 0.06% price de decrease and was in May of 2020. What was going on then? Oh yeah, these were the sales from the time period when the entire economy was shut down during COVID. As you very well know, because we have talked about this before, if prices are in fact going to go down, then we need to see a surge of inventory. So let's check in and see what's happening there. No surge of inventory here. It's where it's been pretty much all year, above 2021 levels, but below the levels of 2022. Today, our inventory levels are down 8.6% when comparing inventory levels of November of 2022. Inventory is trending up, though. In August, we were 22.7% below last year's inventory level. Then in September, it was 16.8%, 14.7% below in October, now 8.6% below when compared to the same time last year. It's nothing to be concerned about. Inventory levels are still very low, and it does make the market conditions slightly better for a buyer 
and buyers will take what they can get at this point, but these inventory gains aren't going to do anything to lower prices. And inventory levels are still 4.9 times lower than they were when we last had this amount of sales back in 2011. Inventory is still very low, but if the market sees a pickup, as these interest rates have been going down, then that tiny inventory cushion will be blown away very quickly. I really don't even think you can call it a cushion. Inventory levels just aren't as bad if you're a buyer. The seasonal fall inventory drawdown is upon us. Buyers now have more homes to look at on the market than they did back in 2021, but still less than the same time period in 2022. So based off of what the trend that we are seeing here, we can expect to go into 2024 with inventory levels somewhere in between the levels we saw in 2021 and 2022. Why is this so important? It's because as we have said time and time again, inventory is what drives pricing. High inventory levels equate to lower pricing. Low inventory levels equate to higher pricing. So if we are going into the new year with low inventory levels, then what is a really good probability that will happen next year? You nailed it. Home pricing gains, at least here in Massachusetts, that is. But as of today, we have 566 fewer homes on the market at the same time in 2022. Meanwhile, we have 918 more houses on the market than we did back in 2021. Quick recap. So sales in the single family market were off by nearly 12%, while inventory was off by 8.6% when compared to last year's numbers. Home prices are not tied to sales levels. They are tied to inventory levels. Our inventory levels are remaining low as we go into 2024. Interest rates are trending lower as we go into 2024. 2024 isn't looking great for the housing market. It is going to crash crowd. Okay, things are back to normal. From a pricing perspective, it's safe to say that October was well an outlier of a month. It happens. November 2022 was 5.8% above the sales prices of November of 2021. So the 7% year-over-year increase this year, it's not abnormal. This month's data proves that October year-over-year -year sales price increases of 13.7%, though that was an outlier. We have the condo market and the multifamily market up next, but first, any chance you could just do me a huge favor as it helps with my YouTube algorithm thing, Majiggy. Can you please hit that like button? It just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel. For the month of November, we saw 1,224 condos close in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $666,000. Let's start with the sales data. The 1,224 units sold was a 12.7% decrease compared to last November when 1,402 units closed. Now, the sales trends continue, with it following the trend of a sales level peak in June, then decreasing sales in the later months. Again, not an awful sales month. November sales levels fell in between the levels that we saw back in 2011 and 2012. This has been our expectation. It's when sales levels fall out of this range. Well, that's when we take a deeper dive into it. I'll happily take it because if there is one thing that I have come to realize in 2023, asking if it can get any worse, well, that's a dumb question because it can. Last month, we talked about how the condo inventory levels were ticking up, and this month, well, that continued. The inventory levels of 2,385 condos on the market at the end of November of this year, for all intents and purposes, is the equivalent to the inventory levels of 2,398 at the end of November 2022. When you compare the inventory levels of today versus the last time we have seen this level of sales, well, that's where it gets a little interesting. As I mentioned earlier, our sales levels put us between the sales levels we saw in 2011 and 2012. Well, there was a pretty drastic change in inventory levels this year in the condo market. We went from 7,232 condos for sale in November of 2011 to 4,791 condos for sale in November of 2012. If based off of 2011's inventory numbers, then that means we currently have three times less the amount of inventory on the market, but based off of 2012's data, and we only now have two times more inventory. This should make condo buyers a little happy. Our inventory levels are great, but it's better than what buyers in the single family market are dealing with. Now, last month, we were talking about how the inventory gap between this year and the last two years was closing. Well, it closed on the 2021 levels, and is now threading the needle at levels right between 2021 and 2022. As of the end of November, we have 145 more units on the market than in 2021 and 86 fewer condos on the market than November of 2022. These lower inventory levels are helping set the stage for a condo market that continues to favor sellers in 2024, and one where we will continue to see price growth. As a year-over-year -year comparison, sales were down 12%, but the amount of new listings that came on the market was pretty even in November 2022, though. 
This year, we had 1,314 new listings hit the market in November, and this is compared to 1,331 that hit the market, uh, it hit the market in November of 2022. This is what buyers want to hear. Remember how in July, home prices were up by 20.7%, and then in August, they were up 13.5%, 15.1% in September, then 9.8% in October? Well, November isn't turning out to be the last four months, but it's 7.1% year-over-year price gain. That's no slouch either. We have seen some very solid pricing gains for condo owners over that last five months. The average sales price of $666,000 was 7.1% higher than the average sales price in November of 2022 when it was 622 grand. Now, last month we were saying that it seems that the trend line has started to normalize with pricing levels, well, leveling out. And I think the November data really puts an exclamation point on that theory. This continues to be crazy. In the first six months of the year, the average sales price was 2.5%. Then when you factor in the last five months, that pricing gain really turns a corner. Year to date, we've seen prices up for the condo market in the state of Massachusetts by 7.3%. I was wrong. I thought we would see some pricing growth in 2023 in the condo market, but I did not think it would be anything close to being this high. Conceptually, I understood how much inventory levels mattered when it came to prices, but I don't think I realized how it was truly the biggest factor that dictates whether prices go up or down. That was my professional lesson of the year, so I'm passing it along. And now for my very quick and, well, shameless plug, if you're thinking about buying or selling, then reach out to me as I would be honored to help you guide you through this process. Now, on to the multifamily market. The multifamily market, it calmed down a bit this month. It's no double-digit pricing gain like we saw the last two months, but it was a very respectable month. In November 2023, we saw 382 multifamily houses sell for an average sales price of $778,000. Now, the multifamily market on the sales side is back to its old tricks again, though. It looks like last month turned out to be an outlier of a month. Darn. The 382 condos sold us 27.1% decrease in year-over-year sales levels for November. Now, that number isn't great, but it frankly, it's not that bad considering the year-over-year decrease in sales average for the first nine months of the year was 34.6%. The 27% is really quite respectable. This graph really gives you an idea of how much the sales levels in the multifamily market sucked this month. We have not had sales levels lower than the 382 units that we sold in November of this year since I started keeping track of the sales data back in 2010. Last month was a good month. Maybe October sales cannibalized November's numbers a bit. Either way, it wasn't pretty, but it wasn't exactly ugly. Now let's take a look at the inventory levels. Sales are low, inventory is low, but there is a but here. At the end of November, there were 800 properties for sale. And here's the but though. Inventory has been trickling up. The spread between October 2022 and October 2023 inventory levels was 21.5%. The November 2023 versus November 2022, it's down to 15%. The amount of new multifamily properties coming on to the market, it was pretty similar though. This year, we were up 3% year over year as there were 548 newly listed multifamily properties in November of 2023 compared to the 530 in November of 2022. When you compare our inventory levels today to those of November of 2010, then there were three and a half times fewer multifamily properties on the market now, pricing in the multifamily market is a little all over the place from a trend standpoint, but an increase month over month in November seems to be a common ca characteristic. And this year was no different. The average sales price was up 6.1% year over year. Now, this chart continues to show how sales prices have been all over the place this year. But what I'm taking away from it is that prices were down four out of the first five months of the year. Prices have now been up five out of the last six months of 2023. And thanks to the November data, the average sales price for a multifamily property in Massachusetts is now up 2.9% through November of this year. September and October were amazing months. They pulled the multifamily market out of the pricing decline trenches. This month continued to build on that. It took the prospects of what looks like was going to be a flat year for pricing, maybe possibly, down a little bit to a very respectable two to three percent pricing gain for the year. Let's talk about your own personal real estate needs. All my contact information, it's in the description below. I always love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. 
And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you traditionally, or we can even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your information and we'll reach out to you. Truly, whatever works best and easiest for you. But any questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in that comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.